off the cuff. That's not bad looking. It's uh, all I know is you must have people that think you're doing a decent job. Well, thank you for the cup. Thank you. You're the only one here. Well, I know that after what happened to the last one, that this could be for the naught. last pastor or the last cup. Well, I'll be honest with you, I I was barely born. Hey, that's true. <laughs> when there was a last pastor, but but anyway. I do. I'll. I'll I apologize for dropping that cup. And, and here's the deal. I saved the template. If this one falls to its sudden death, I'm going to give you a one-time replacement. Man, thank you. Because you do such a good job. There thank you. Thank you. This morning, hey, you're watching the Oxford Mike and Bray. Uh, this morning, we just want to quickly talk about music. Now, getting your day started is very important. It sets the tone for your day. You know, if you wake up in the morning and you're kind of begrudging the fact that it's Monday, you think it's going to get better on Tuesday? Probably not. Probably not. So, you know, setting a good tone in the morning like you like to do with reading the scripture. You got your coffee pot that goes off, get you a cup of coffee, read scripture. Yep. I just get up and start getting the kids together. But when we get to the car, we have our little Bible study book, and then we'll listen to some Christian music. And the difference of starting your day off that way versus just staying wound up till the next thing is night and day. Especially when you speak to your children, um, there seems to me there is a disconnect nowadays, uh, and uh, that's a new problem. But I mean, where um, we don't we don't make a big enough deal of worship music, mm. you know, with yeah. our kids and and in general, uh, even as adults, that that we we find, you know, we all got different styles we like we will find sure. the style as long as it's biblical song mm -hmm. and enjoy it and yes. let that be your you know the stimulus mm -hmm. instead of something about you know messing up a marriage or you know what I mean <laughs> yeah. they, they come out all kind of flavors but yes you know that lifts you up mm -hmm. um, especially again combining the reading of the word of God praying Mm -hmm. You know, get get your marching orders for the day. Right. Acknowledge who's in charge, and it's not mm -hmm. you. That's right. And and then when you add some worship music to that, and, and again with your children, that's that's one of the best things that can happen to them is to enjoy worship music. A hundred percent. And the difference is whether or not your kids walk around the house when they have a little joyful outburst, like I hear you sing at home sometimes. I know I do it too. They actually have those song lyrics, you know, mm -hmm. in their little souls, in their little hearts that gets to come out as opposed to, uh, uh, anyway, all the other. When you, uh, the addition of the Bible and biblical worship song, mm -hmm. and we can argue all day about the biblical part, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like some of them, you know, you hope all of them are biblical when, when we say biblical they're not sure. going to be because humans wrote them but yeah. but some of them are very shallow mm -hmm. in in that they just repeat something yeah that you hope's biblical yeah right <laughs> or at right. least has a you know biblical tone to it sure. of worship right um but when you feed your children and yourselves the mm -hmm. word of god and you add that and especially like I remember when I came up early in my Christian life, and I really enjoyed uh, I enjoyed hymn music, hymn, old hymns that that now I know how to kind of test them whether they were biblical or not. But yeah. most of them were. Mm -hmm. But it really, in my case, and the time that I came up spiritually, they really uh, they really gave me a solid ground in addition to my Bible study. Yes, because a lot of them were they they were the gospel, you know, mm -hmm. in in song, or they were familiarity with good Bible stories. I yes. mean, you, just like the songs about heaven, like you, right. the ones that are you know, like we say, biblical. <laughs> but you know, some of those paint uh, the sure. pictures right off of the. Uh, they paint just a different type of picture of what the word says, and it, and it, I don't know something about hearing it in song makes it sometimes more impactful. Yes, it's it's just a good why why is the why is there a whole book called you know song yeah <laughs> you exactly know? 
So, uh, worship music has always been important, mm -hmm. and it'll always be important. And again, we we goof it up sure. because we're fallen, mm -hmm. and some of it, you know, is a little silly and a little shallow. Yeah, I try to. I don't really enjoy it. That, you know, the more that I uh, study and preach, the less I enjoy. It. Mm -hmm. Some of it, sure, but there's a bunch of it I, I love. Well, there's this breakdown too. Like for instance, you know, one of the biggest songs right now is you know Watermelon Sugar by a guy who used to be with uh, One Direction. And let's just and, and and look, you know, even in schools and sports fields, you know, they play all kinds of music sometimes that you know, you know, the kids hear it one way or the other. You kids hear the stuff somehow, and those songs you have to take an active approach in explaining why they're not beneficial to you. You know, you have to you have to actually say, hey, I hear you singing a song, but have you ever thought, you know, that a 10-year-old child is singing about, you know, a raunchy relationship? You know, you're like, hey, sweetie, we, we, this song may sound great, but we really don't need to sing it, and here's why. Even some of the stuff that is a little more shallow, at least you're not having to do that whole deconstruction so you know some people are like well my kids learning you know seven <clears> lines <throat> seven times or whatever the the joke is when they listen to x christian station it's 11 11 times well you know so yes but it you is, don't have that deconstruction process right. it's called straining at a net yeah swallowing a can that's right so we strain at a net about christian music sometimes mm -hmm. but then the camel gets eaten because our kids are still listening to stuff yeah. that they shouldn't listen to this secular. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's a, it's an age old, you know that. Okay. I mean, I got, I got saved in, you know, the early 80s. Yeah. So the worship wars were, hey, I got scarred all over me. <laughs> <laughs> sure. But because, you know, I was the first, mm -hmm. you know, student minister here who, you know. Tried we, a little of that? Well, we stepped out and, you know, uh, did new stuff that they had never heard before. Mm -hmm. We even put it in books for our kids when you take them on camp because there was no way to... You had to make your own book. Yeah. yeah. What like you could just go buy them. I had a couple of guys that were jammed up here in those days helping me at college age. Mm -hmm. One of them was here yesterday. He lives in Oklahoma. Yes. Yeah. But uh, they, were, they were sharp mm -hmm. on helping get stuff together. Yes. And um, that's, you know, I got called down for that two or three times, but it it was because they were actually enjoying worship for a change. That's right. <laughs> so, you know, I just went on with it. And think about the fruits of, you know, I know we're really talking about how to get your morning started, but uh, many people that have been in our church um, have, you know, been partially influenced by the fact that there was kind of a worship style change mm -hmm. and, and have been the beneficiaries of that. When... Uh, when a let's say a couple in their sixties or seventies gets to sit in church, and their grandkids want to be there with them, oh, yeah. you talking about what wouldn't you give for that? And and the fact that let's just take and I'm very thankful for this. We're humbled by it, but uh, in our new members classes, you know, three college students going through it in two that's weeks time, right. you know, you're like, man, okay, you know, if that's what you know. If this is if this is firing yes. on these cylinders like this. We're gonna be about it, and if it, if it's working across all these generations, you know, God's some is blessing this. You know, we should start our day with it, probably and, too. And I honestly believe this, though, that the kind of people, young people, you want to attract, they love hymns too, right? Which really, we don't, we don't hear like when when, and you say it sometimes. We 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 could get away with more. You know what I mean? Sometimes oh, yeah. of, of the old goodies, yeah. you know, that, that are out there. You put a you put a bass guitar to it. Yeah. Oh yeah. And our people love it. And these young people, some that, that come, they don't. They're not like the people that during the worship wars that would fight you over. You know, they they will adapt. Mm, they really and they are. enjoy it mm -hmm. because other people around them are enjoying it, and it is, it's, it's, and it's very unique too. Because like you're not getting this anywhere else. Like when you're at a so-called blended church service, yeah. you know we say so-called. This we're calls. Yeah, it's we're, a big. Yeah, when you say blended. Wow, what does that mean? I mean it's a it's a wide wow. array of things. Yeah. 
but uh, you don't get that anywhere else. <clears throat> you know, even if you're listening to your Christian radio station, yeah. you're getting kind of one type. Or if you're listening to your bluegrass, or you're listening to your gospel station, or whatever, you're getting kind of this one type, or hip hop, or whatever your thing is. But here you get this, and it's just it's unique. And so there's something about getting to come in once or twice a week and enjoy this from this unique perspective of all kinds of people, school teachers, coaches, yes. moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas getting together and singing together. It's, it's quite fun. We should be very wise. We should be wise in our selection and that takes work. Mm -hmm. And then understand that we are very diverse in, in you know what people enjoy listening to. Yep. My challenge is don't be a knot on a law mm. when your type of worship song is not being sung. I don't care how old you are. Right. I, and we don't experience that here. No. Like now I have. It's been a long, long time mm -hmm. that, you know, we had to we had to make it happen. Right. And but hey, I enjoy it all. Exactly. I mean, I'm just glad to be in the house of God. And Amen. I'll let you know if I catch you in some kind of crazy lyric, mm -hmm. you know, that that is absolutely, I call it sensual. Mm -hmm. I, my, my roots were hymn music and southern gospel. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of sensual activity in southern gospel. No, no different than contemporary music. Right. There's a lot of sensual stuff going on if you're not... Mm -hmm. You know, sensitive to that, yes. and I am mm -hmm. because I know I know what I'm talking about. Yes. My background. You go to some of these, you know, so-called concerts or singings or whatever. There's mm -hmm. a lot of sensuality, and and it's a, the devil doesn't care what how he gets into the church. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter to him if it's with old music or new music. He don't That's care. Right. And. You know, leaders need to. We need to be sensitive to that, and not mm -hmm. not be legalistic. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, again, the, you know, the things that are filtered through, you're letting your kids listen stuff they're fired about. They sing the songs on the way to school. Mm -hmm. You you're smart enough to know if you heard something that's just way out there. Yeah, of course. And wow, you know, mm -hmm. and then if it was a pattern, then you change. Exactly. Well, you change that media. You you build your own and let them listen to it. That's right. right? You you yep. pick out your songs. Yeah, we're already there. All right. Yeah. So that's what I mean. So exactly. It's not that hard to fix nowadays. It's very easy. And it, again, we're talking about just being a little bit more intentional about starting your mornings. Yes. You, like Dave Ramsey says, when it comes to fixing your finances, it's you know like ten or twenty percent head knowledge, and then the rest is just actually doing it. You know, carrying it out. Yeah. Same thing. Say, you know, tonight you say, in the morning, I want to do something a little different. I'm going to set my Bible out on the kitchen yes. table. I'm yes. going to uh, yes. go ahead and find the music that I might would like to listen to on my way to work. And go ahead and just make those, you know, that's one minute. I mean, that's two minutes of just prep that will change, change you know, life. most of your, your morning to your day as it becomes a lifestyle pattern, like you say, changes your life. When I... I I don't even know how many years ago, a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Started doing the Psalm and Proverb. Mm -hmm. And then about every third year, I read through the Bible. And that, just that, you know, decision, mm -hmm. it literally changed my life. Like, yes, it does. I just can't, you know, say enough about when you start your day a certain way. Mm -hmm. Then then it just changes your week. It's like, it's like you gave God the honor of your thoughts and your time. Yep. And he's already given you everything. Mm -hmm. Every good gift comes from above. And he'll, but you know what? It's like he's not done. Exactly. You, <laughs> he, already, he already gave you, you know, life. And, yes. And health and a job and, mm -hmm. and, you know, his son. His son. And the yeah. air we breathe and a heart beating. Yes. But then when you honor him, it's like, it's almost like another door to right. your day has been opened to where you, you right. think about who are the lost people in my life? Mm -hmm. Who, you know, my job is my mission field. Mm -hmm. my, my school I'm attending is my mission field. I'm a stay-at-home mom or my children and, and the people they know and my neighbors are my mission field, mm -hmm. whatever. And 
that's how we're supposed to operate. It's a world that I'm glad yeah. that God, you know, allowed me to be a part of, and then opened my eyes to how to to increase. You know, like a hundred percent. It's it's. Uh, I I literally now at at the age that I am, and and doing what I do for a living. Mm -hmm. I start my Mondays on Sunday. Yeah. I go ahead. I, right. See, I don't. I don't dread Mondays anymore. I mean, no. we make fun of it. I was still like, yeah. I say I quit every Monday, but actually I quit every Sunday. Yeah. But, <laughs> but uh, you know, I just go ahead and start. I, I start thinking about. It. Sometimes I actually start my sermon. Yeah, it's rare, but I at least you're thinking about. Oh, it I now. read yeah. the text, and I, you know, hey, you know, <laughs> you know. So this morning I got here very early, and I already kind of know a rough. You know, skeleton. In a little while, I'll, I'll, you know, start pinning it down. Yes. But, well, the same thing. Like when I was in secular work, my last few years, as I knew God was about to do something in my life. Well, mm -hmm. I, I, I had a bag I carry every day, old satchel, yeah, and stuff in it. And one of those was a Bible, mm -hmm. and another one would be a book by a Swindoll or a Stanley or. Yeah. A Rogers, Adrian, you know, You're something. talking about some <clears throat> an, an, an easy read that, yes, that anybody back, could buy and, well, and, and use. Yes, yeah. and um, they literally, it literally changed my life. It literally yes. made me more evangelistic, mm -hmm. more, you know, I was in a job where, just like everybody else, you know, yep. surrounded by the unsaved. Yep. And not losing my testimony was very important to me. Mm -hmm. So those things helped. When I was in my, I guess I'd be my second full-time job, I was a like a, a machine operator, and so I had my own machine, and I taped up two chapters of the Bible, and I'd sit there and, and work to memorize it. as NIV 1984 edition. I found out later because I got a newer copy of NIV, and I'm like, why does this not read the way I memorized it? But anyway, yeah. but the point was, you know, <clears throat> it kind of set the tone for my morning because if you go to work at 3 in the morning and, and you're memorizing Scripture by 5 a.m., there's something sweet about that with the Lord that I, I'll never forget how much it benefited me to just try to give some of that back to the Lord that early. And, you know, some people will say, well, you know, I'll read the Bible at night, and that's good, but there is no substitute to to starting with the Lord, even if it's... It's just something small, something in the morning because you're about to face yeah. a day full of its trials and tribulations. So in a fallen world, come on. But music, prayer, mm -hmm. Bible reading, you know, some level of devotional study, whatever yeah. you do. Some people do a lot. Some people do a little. Mm -hmm. Just do something. Yes. And it just changes your day. It just you. It does. Because the Word of God through. You know, through Bible reading and study, and through music, sometimes mm -hmm. is what He uses to mold you. Yep. And don't rely on one of those. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I know a lot of people. I don't care anything about the. You know, one guy says, "I don't care anything about the worship time. I'm ready for the sermon. Well, whatever. I appreciate you, but I'm I'm interested in the whole deal. Yep. Because they did the whole deal. Right. In the Old Testament, <laughs> and even Paul commanded us mm -hmm. to sing what? Songs, songs hymns, and spiritual, spiritual songs. songs. Yeah. That's not a suggestion. Yeah. I mean, that's how you do business. Mm -hmm. and, and so the people of God, when they give back their time, their, you know, some of their brain matter to, <laughs> to, uh, to the Lord yes. you know, and, and, and think mm -hmm. about these things, yep. the good things. That's right. Things that are, you know, holy. Things that are, mm -hmm. you know, there's some hope in there. Yes. He will, he will bless you and use you on a, a, a level you didn't even know you could go. And I'm trying to start that more early with my kids than even, you know, the Lord allowed me to. But like today it's it's fall break for, for my child and many children. But she's staying today with her one of her granddads. And anyway, I said, you know, after we prayed and we did our little bit, I said, today... Why don't you try to see if your papa will come to church with you this week, you know, and invite him? Because let's just be honest, my ten-year-old working on my mother was more or less the factor. Oh, I'm sure. You know what I mean? Because it's just something about a grandchild, you know, with a pure heart. 
a 10 year old is not asking you to come to church for any nefarious reason right. period point right. blank other than they want to see you and they want what's best for you you know so start that sooner you know with her and, and we'll see how it comes out but I think we can all kind of adapt some of that like for the men this week as we're, we're looking forward to Sunday with the men's breakfast you've got five days what man young man are you going to invite that you'd like to be a part of that because this could be their first as we quite found out this week this could be their first interaction with the Word of God oh very likely yes and and again why why are we surprised no we shouldn't be that and and that's why I try to be very careful in, in how I talk to people mm-hmm. you know anytime but but especially in when you get them to come to discover class or whatever what yes. it's you know they, they've been a guest mm-hmm. we don't we don't need to understand we are in a I think we are I'm not one that, that keeps up with statistics or whatever but I'm pretty sure we are in a post you know Christian time as far sure. as you know don't make it sound so negative yeah. I mean as far as the majority of influence is not from from Christian values anymore more or less it's from cultural concepts that's, that's what that means yeah. yeah I know one thing there's people in this state and community mm-hmm. who have zero and I mean zero mm-hmm church background yeah and and their parents have zero to little Mm -hmm. it's two generations at least right and guys like me that are you know that are pushing a little age we we tend to forget that that Mm -hmm. we are we are ministering to people with with no knowledge of the scripture right and it is a huge blessing Mm -hmm. to have somebody that comes into the church in that condition. I, I mean, think what? even Paul said it was like he, he said, "I'm building on a fresh foundation." You know what I mean? I'm like with the Jews, you had to right. sit there, had to work through right. all their stuff because right. he he knows what that was about. He was one, but you know, right. with some of these Gentiles, it was like he was telling them for the first time, and they were like, "Okay, I get it. It's connecting. The Holy Spirit working in their life." And we we hey, we got to think. We've got to think that way now. It mm-hmm. doesn't mean, you know. Uh, thankfully, we didn't experience it so much. But you can you can become secular in your approach and mm-hmm. and still and not reach people. Yeah. I mean, a person that God, you know, it, it's it's the gift He's put them here. That's right. They are a gift. They are from God. That's right. <laughs> and so let's don't mess it up by being so worldly. They can't tell the difference between us and somewhere world. That's right. I mean, so we we, we got to be careful with our uh, approach to, you know, get people to come. Mm-hmm. And then what do they experience when they get here? Yeah. They need the Word of God. Mm-hmm. And the Word of God, it can be, um, it can be offensive. Sure. It's not always going to be mm-hmm. some power talk or, you know, yeah. life coaching. It's yeah. got to be Salt has to burn mm-hmm. before you know you're getting cleaned up. That's I mean, right. that's just the way it is. And I, I don't mean we need to add much to it. Mm-hmm. The Word of God will do it. It's yeah. like, let, let open the cage, let the lion out, and he'll, we'll see who wins. Exactly. You know I mean? <laughs> and that's, if somebody's going to get saved, it's going to be through the power of the gospel, not, that's right. not the power of our ability to act secular in our approach. And let's say it like it is to kind of wrap this up. Most people that, that ha- have invited somebody or bring someone with them to church, these are people that have implemented some form of starting in the mornings with they the would. Lord, yeah, you know, because their, their, their minds are thinking about those types yeah. of things and they're, and they're being just, able to do it. I mean, in our case, and we're in a little world, but yeah. just talk to the people that bring people. Most of the time, they are your more solid people. Yeah. You know, every once in a while, it would be, you know, some some student and they're you know they're kind of new at it themselves which is a good place yeah but they're building on a solid foundation you can tell or probably in a, in a case like ours they wouldn't invite their yes. friend and but our adults when they invite people they're they and and the people actually come and can we say thank you one more time to our church for 
I mean, I know uh, many of our college oh, students are feeling very, very good about inviting their friends uh, because regardless of age, people are, are, are making sure you know as a guest when you come here you're welcome yes. and there's just no substitute no. for that you no matter how good the music or the preaching is you yes. can't overcome a cold no. church no and i'm so thankful yes that, I, that people tell us that mm -hmm. you know there's been times through the years where and every once in a while you're gonna get popped sure they sit in their own place around their own person yeah and you know that person you know had a bad day or, or a bad day. life i don't know yeah right. but but thankfully, the vast majority of people tell us mm -hmm. I couldn't have been treated better. Yes. And that oof, talking not, about takes a stress, load of stress off of it. Does. It's such a an element mm -hmm. of outreach for you. Yes. When when I was treated well at 20 years old, and you're talking about early 80s. Yes. And I was treated very well here. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it, if I hadn't have been as anti as I was. Yeah. Well, it took much. Oh, one Sunday. Yeah. I had been it for me. I'm telling. I yes. mean, that's. I was already suspect. Yeah. And then, but then, that first Sunday, hey. Mm -hmm. Second Sunday, wow. Third Sunday, profess Christ. Amen. So, that's what you want. That's right? exactly what you so, want. Yeah. And we're looking forward to what yesterday gospel was shared or two days ago because we mm -hmm. live in the time where aren't time you more. glad I messed it up again? Well, I did it too. You, you enjoy it when I do it. I do. I really do. I enjoy know, it. and it's okay. But thankfully, you got to share the gospel with a young lady, and you know, just believe in how we believe because we're not going to live defeatist. We think the Lord's going to do something oh, yeah. in her life, oh. and for the other people that Wait. you know, we're here for the two services. Great message. Well, the young man you met with mm -hmm. got saved a few weeks ago, right? Right, he, that's he's right. Looking to discover, and mm -hmm. he's supposed to follow through this coming week. Yep. So, hey, it's you know, it it was a very productive day. That's right. That's all I know to say. And we're yeah. looking forward to some more of those. Yes. Come join us Wednesday night. You'll be out under the tent. Under the big tent. And uh, what's the temperature? How's it? It's gonna be nice. Oh, it's gonna be nice yes. still. Okay. It's at the end of the week that it kind of yes. dips down. Sunday morning for the men's breakfast would be cool. But then men know how to put on layers. Tough. They're, they're tough dudes. They probably squirrel hunters. Yeah, like exactly. Yeah. They, yeah, they got this. Yeah. But then we'll be in here um, for most of the service, and then we'll have a little uh, outdoor thing going on um, at the conclusion. You know, near the conclusion of our Wednesday night. So. Oh yeah. Come on, join us 6.30 Wednesday. We'd love to have you yes. here. Brother Mike, you'll pray. We'll get out of here. Lord, thank you for blessing us with a great Sunday this week and yes. the new people. And mm -hmm. uh, Lord, thank you for our people. Uh, yes. they're, they're solid. And they, they've been good to people when they visit. And thank you for that. Uh, thank you for the people you've saved. Thank you for uh, getting us uh, through these times. Yeah. And, and Lord, they, we just take uh, navigation and strategy and all that comes from you. You. Mm -hmm help us and thank you for that just use us uh, for your glory help us to reach as many Lord as we can uh, before you come find us faithful we pray in Jesus name amen amen